In the far distance, there is smoke from a burning mountain fire, and in the near distance, there is a sea of people lining up for nucleic acid testing in the 40 degree heat and sun. This is a fascinating scene that happened in Chongqing recently. Since August 17th, at least 10 large wildfires have occurred in Chongqing. And at the same time, it is experiencing the worst high temperature weather in 61 years, accompanied by drought and power outages. The people who were already in the midst of a disaster have been subjected to the CCP's iron fisted zero COVID policy, requiring nucleic acid testing of all residents. Some netizens lamented that any one of these four disasters, which are wildfires, high temperatures, power outages, and epidemics, Can destroy a city, but at this moment, Chongqing is going through all of them. Surrounded by mountains, Chongqing is also known as the Mountain City. On the evening of August 17th, wildfires broke out in Beishanping and Daliang Mountains in Fuling District, Chongqing. In just one week, wildfires occurred in more than a dozen places in Chongqing, including Banan, Beibei, Dazhou. Tongliang and Kaizhou. Among them, the wildfires in Banan District and Jinyun Mountain in Beibei District were the most destructive. In the early morning of August 24th, a Chongqing citizen filmed a live video of a mountain fire burning on the roof of a building. In the picture, the whole mountain is shrouded in thick smoke, and the raging flames painted the night sky red, forming a sea of fire like hell on earth. The authorities announced on August 25th that the open flames in Banan District had been extinguished, but the Beibei Mountain Fire, which had been burning since the evening of the 21st, continued to spread and is approaching residential areas. Local residents said that even though they dug out an isolation zone, the fire still passed through and is very large. As of the evening of the 25th, official media announced that the open flames of the Beibei Mountain Fire had been brought under control. Due to the steep mountain road, it is difficult for vehicles to pass through. A large number of volunteers were recruited to go to the fire site to dig an isolation belt and gather motorcycles to transport materials. Online videos showed that many local people rode mountain bikes and shuttled back and forth with backpacks with supplies on their backs. They carried food, water and biscuits, fire extinguishers, gasoline, and diesel fuel for excavators on the mountain in their backpacks. The mountain road is steep, and most people can only go up halfway of the mountain to transfer the supplies. The more skilled bikers ride to the top, or volunteers carry the supplies on foot from the halfway point of the mountain. There were also volunteers who tied the ice to their motorcycles and carried it up the mountain. They placed the ice in a barrier to prevent the fire from spreading and burning. On August 25th, volunteers who delivered supplies said that the fire was still not well controlled. Fortunately, no one was killed, but some were injured. On the 24th, an excavator digging the isolation belt rolled down from a height of 100 meters. However, according to online reports, when these self organized motorcycle teams went down the mountain after they were done, There were traffic police waiting to check whether they were wearing helmets or had various documents. More than 50 volunteers had been fined 200 yuan each, and some motorcycles have been directly confiscated. Moreover, a picture uploaded by netizens showed that there were actually epidemic prevention personnel taking nucleic acid tests not far from the fire scene. Another person in the queue also had a fire extinguishing sign, indicating that he was a firefighter. On August 25th, a photo was posted online showing that hundreds of firefighters were lining up under the stars to receive nucleic acid tests. The caption of the photo reads Thanks to the Yunnan firefighters for supporting us in Beibei, Chongqing. You are still taking nucleic acid tests in the early morning. According to CCP media reports, The Yunnan Provincial Forest Fire Department dispatched the first echelon of 304 personnel and 55 vehicles to Chongqing at 4 30 a.m. on the 24th to reinforce the firefighting efforts and planned to arrive at the assembly area at around 9 p.m. on the 24th. 
Some party media claim that the first group that arrives will be dispatched to the Beibei District fire immediately. However, the above photos show that after the fire department arrived in Chongqing, they did nucleic acid testing first and then went to extinguish the fire. A Sichuan netizen asked on the internet whether volunteers must have a negative nucleic acid certificate before they can participate in firefighting. Consequently, he was detained by the police for seven days for this so-called malicious questioning. In Ba Nan Village, which is located near the fire, the villagers are supporting the firefighting efforts. However, due to the closure of the village due to the epidemic. They cannot go out of the village to purchase supplies, even if they have negative nucleic acid test results. The villagers sent a message for help, saying that due to the continuous high temperature, many people involved in the firefighting suffered from heat stroke and urgently needed water and ice. But they couldn't go out of the village to buy things, so they begged people from outside to send them over. Due to the ongoing epidemic. The Chongqing authorities announced that, starting from six o'clock on August twenty-fourth, nucleic acid screening of more than seventeen million citizens in nine urban areas in the center of Chongqing will be carried out, and everyone is required to complete it on the same day, causing massive dissatisfaction. Other neighborhoods were put under lockdown and controlled, and citizens were not allowed to go out. Some netizens reported. Sixteen streets in Chongqing were closed for three days due to the epidemic, in addition to the forty-four degrees Celsius heat and the cutoff of electricity. What a sin! People in China must download an app called Health Code as an electronic passport. The Health Code can track the holder's itinerary at any time and display their health status. The Health Code of Chongqing citizens is called Yukang Code, and in the early morning of August twenty-fourth. All citizens in the area received an orange pop-up window. If they don't take the nucleic acid test on that day, the health code will become yellow from the next day, and they will not only be restricted from going out and working, but will also have to take the nucleic acid test twice in three days for a period of time. So the citizens had to queue up for several hours to take the nucleic acid test at high temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius. There is also a satirical picture of queuing up for nucleic acid testing while the wildfire is burning. There are videos showing that many elderly people and children fainted from heat stroke at the scene of the queue. On August twenty third, at the nucleic acid queue in Shaping Ba, Chongqing, under the high temperature of forty five degrees, the eighty year old woman cannot stand the heat. Her body trembled, and she was supported by her family to leave. A pregnant woman seemed to have fainted and sat on a chair, and a man is seen pinching her Rinzong acupuncture point to serve as first aid. Under the high temperatures, nucleic acid testing was repeated continuously, causing public grievances. A video shows that on August twenty-fourth, a large number of people in Chongqing gathered and shouted, "Don't do nucleic acid! Don't do nucleic acid!" Not only in Chongqing, but as the epidemic spreads all over China, nucleic acid test. Not only in Chongqing, but as the epidemic spreads all over China, nucleic acid testing is being done everywhere. On August twenty fifth, this year's number nine typhoon Masa landed in Guangxi and Guangdong. The meteorological department issued an orange warning for typhoons and a blue warning for heavy rain. Online sources said that the meteorological department advised people not to go out as much as possible, but schools asked students and parents to go to the school for nucleic acid testing. Thousands of people lined up for nucleic acid during the overnight storm. What's even more, in, in Hangzhou, there was only one confirmed case, but more than four hundred thousand people lined up for nucleic acid during the overnight storm. What's even more irritating is that in a video on the internet, the secretary of a village shouted over a loudspeaker that if there was a case of infection in the village, he would be buried alive immediately. The officials turned a blind eye. There were, at the same time as the wildfires and the outbreak of the epidemic, Chongqing is experiencing the most extreme high temperature weather since 1961. Although the officials turned a blind eye, there were continuous reports of high-temperature death cases. 
On August 22nd, a Weibo user posted that a taxi driver in Chongqing died of heat in a roadside car. His tragedy is not entirely due to natural disasters. The driver, who lives in Shapingba, saw a new confirmed case of COVID-19 last week. The driver was afraid that his health code would turn yellow when he got home and could no longer make money with his car, so he stayed in the car all the time. He was reluctant to turn on the air conditioner where there were no guests. Under the high temperature and the CCP's COVID zeroing policy, he unfortunately passed away. The hot weather also caused severe droughts. Located in Xushan, Chongqing, the Dasi Reservoir with a total capacity of 170 million cubic meters has almost dried up, and a large number of fish has died. Nearby villagers caught fish in what was left of the muddy water. The water level of the rivers caused by this severe drought has not only exposed many cultural relics, but also exposed the tofu drag project. A video shows that a pier that has been underwater for a long time is now exposed. The cement on the pier has almost all been corroded, and only a few thin steel bars are left to support. Not only wildfires, but also various anomalies have been reported frequently in recent days. This video shows that on the Fuling River in Chongqing, there is a fire in the water, and it is suspected that natural gas is coming out of the ground. When a man picked up wet leaves from the water and placed them on a pile of rocks in the water, the leaves were instantly on fire. Another video shows smoke coming from many places on a road in Chongqing. A man said in the video, Are you afraid? Is it geothermal activity? Various weird scenes made people fear an earthquake. Some netizens said, the saying of a big earthquake after a drought year is not a lie. The high temperature caused by the collision and friction of the underground plates caused a severe drought. Two or three years after the drought, there will most likely be a major earthquake. And the later the earthquake, the greater the magnitude. Geng Qingguo, a well-known geologist and seismologist in China, put forward the theory of dry earthquakes. He studied historical records and found that the 1 to 3.5 years before the earthquake were often droughts. In the face of the depletion of hydropower in Sichuan, before the end of the first wave of power restrictions on the 24th, Chongqing issued another notice to extend power restrictions affecting the production of local chemicals, automobiles, laptops, semiconductors, and solar energy. As for when the blackout will end, the reply is until further notice. Another video shows a factory owner complaining about how difficult it will be for the manufacturing industry in the summer of 2022. He complained about the loss of business due to the unforeworn power cuts, but the officials did not care. Delicho 电业局还不给你讲任何理由，突然间就给你拉电，他管你的机器是多少钱买的，管你的机器会不会因为突然间停电给你的机器带来什么后果，所以说我们这个叫电什么什么霸啊，没办法。